Welcome to Prosper's online prosperity show. And we are going to have some good fun with our wives and teach you how to get into property. So let's do it, shall we? Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I brought you the property mentor and property educator, Craig. Craig, how are you doing there today? I'm terrific, thanks, Prosper. Thanks very much for having me along. It's great to be amongst your crowd. Fantastic. Well, I bet with your expertise, your education, and with the knowledge that you have in the property sector, today you're going to be shedding us a little bit of light on how we too can start, scale, and grow a property portfolio that we would be proud of. Now, obviously, property is yet another instrument that people can invest. A lot of people are working far too hard in their businesses, and they would be wanting to put out um, a bit of money out there so that it can, you know, help them, you know, towards building their wealth. Tell us a little bit about your business and how you actually got started there, Craig. Like a lot of businesses in this world, I guess I got started by accident and a bit of passion here and there. I went along about ooh, 14 years ago and I went, went to a property seminar as you do in Australia and I bought a place off the plan and it was terrific and da, 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 it went on and then I realised, I went along to another property education thing three days later and I realised, oops, I made the first mistake of property investing. I bought something off a developer, off the plan. Guess who made all the money? And it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess that got me interested. How could I have done it better? And I'd been in the IT industry for over 20 years at that stage. So I plotted along in the IT industry, but it really got me thinking, how can I do it better and do things better? So. I started looking into investing and I went along and I did all these courses, anything, any course came up, I was there. One day, half day, I was an addict. So did a lot of five day courses and learnt a lot of things. And most of all, what I learnt was what not to do. How do people actually lose their money when they go investing as such? Are they actually gambling instead of investing? And a lot found out a lot of people do. They just gamble. They spend more time looking in and researching for their holidays than they do looking into their property investments, which is probably the biggest thing they'll do in their life. So, <laughs> yeah, that was the key to it, really. And I guess that went on, and I did a number of things. I when it became a conveyancer so that I knew how to buy properties. I, when it became a mortgage broker again, so I knew how I should borrow money. I went and bought a few properties, sold a couple here and there as well. I've bought some bad ones, bought some good ones, made some mistakes. And most of all, I've developed a fantastic network of people around me so that what I don't know, I know the people that do know. And having that network around you is a key to success, I believe. And that's not just in the property or the investing market. It's in every business, every type of entrepreneurship or business that you start up. You've got to have those key people around you that have the knowledge, have the experience, and have made the mistakes before you so that you don't have to make those mistakes again. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that um, insight into how you got started and why this passion has drove you to want to help other people so that they don't fall into the same mistakes um, that you have went through, you know? Because in life, we're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And we can't... 
um, you know, learn all, I mean, you and people learn mainly from mistakes, but we can't make all the mistakes and some mistakes are costly. And, you know, people like yourself have already done them so that other people can learn off of. So what is it now that you help people with if somebody comes up to you, Craig, and they want to learn, um, you know, about maybe picking up a, a property within, you know, Melbourne or something that you're familiar with? Well, what I do these days is I've set up a vast repository of training programs up on the internet. So I actually sell them a training program which hooks them up. They can get onto the internet 24-7 and watch the videos, watch the training programs, download the checklists, work through the worksheets, and they can do this for particular pro uh, projects that they've got on. If they've got a reno project on, they can go and study the renovation sections. If they're doing a new purchase, they can do the same thing. And I'm accumulating these as I go along and adding more and more to it. So that's how I'm trying to help people. But you spoke of my passion. My passion is actually sitting two rooms away in his bedroom. And that is my 19 year old son. Oh. And he's these days in Australia, it is so hard to get into the property market. And I wonder how is he and my niece, who's 19 as well, how is she going to get into the property market? This is why I'm doing it, to try and give ways that they can become educated, save up, figure out how to get into the property market, because there's a lot of different ways. I was talking with a childcare worker today and her salary is $30,000 a year. Yeah. I know this because my wife is a childcare worker and she certainly never got paid 30 grand a year. <laughs> so she's wanting to get into the property market and she said, oh, I could get grants and first homeowner grants and that should help. But seriously, unless you're going to go and live out in the boondocks, out in the bush, the Grants are not going to be of any use to you because you're then not going to be able to get a bank loan. You need to have the cash flow to s support the loan as well. And a lot of people don't have that cash flow. So she said, how can I get into the property market? I said, well, there are ways, and it goes back to about these networks. These days, there's something called crowdfunding, where a $500,000 property, as an example, they'll sell you $5,000 shares in that property. So you'll buy 1% of the property for $5,000. They'll keep that property for a certain period or do something to it, and in three years' time, they'll sell that. So you'll get 1% of the profit as well. So you'll get your money back plus 1% of the profit. So for $5,000, these days, people can get into the property market. Mm. That's, that wasn't possible three years ago. That is possible today. So it's a matter of figuring out how people can get in. And that's just one of the small strategies that I help people with. Understandable. Like right now, that is something that even, you know, I myself did not know I could just buy a little nook in the city there and it would be making money for me. So thank you so much for yes. that value that, that you have just brought up um us to you also mentioned a really valid point um where you know kids or you know people at a certain age right now cannot enter into the australian market and there's not a lot of people that are teaching them out there or if they are they're just selling them a get rich quick um scams which maybe one of them you were sold to uh, earlier how can people notice the difference between a genuine um you know property advisor and somebody who's just really trying to sell them uh, a dundas that's behind the scenes um that they're just trying to offload off the market okay first of all i don't want to bag my colleagues out there and say get rich quick so uh, just <laughs> for those, all those that are watching <laughs> however there are a lot of developers out there and their goal is to put money in develop a product and sell it and make money that's their business statement and you can't knock them for that that is what they're there to do the question is 
does this person coming into the property market actually know what the, what this person's role is? That their role is to make money out of there. So it's a matter of understanding, doing your research and understanding all the parties in the deal and what their motivations are. You have to understand where everybody is making their money. I've, I particularly like to work on something that a guy called Stephen Kovacs from Brisbane taught me once, and it was his wife principle. What's in it for everyone? So everyone has to win. And yeah, I was actually in a car once and Steve Kovacs rang the day after that I saw him present that concept and had it on speakerphone. And I said, oh, Steve, I said, I saw you yesterday. I said, can I keep your wife and use your wife? <laughs> <laughs> the, person, the person sitting on the passenger side of the car just looked at me. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I, I always have to thank Stephen Kovac for his wife. <laughs> oh, I do believe I'm blushing. <laughs> but... It's a great concept. It really is, and I love that. You've got to understand what it, where everybody's motivations are, where everybody's making money, and everybody should win in the deal. And that's how I try and teach people and certainly what I believe in. Understandable. Well, you did raise a valid concept there about making profits. Obviously, people get into um, the property business so that they can, you know, make some sort of um, retainer or some sort of wealth building strategy. Now, can you treat um, real estate as, as you know, or property investment as a business if you are, you know, just um, working or can you just leave it to the professionals to look after it for yourself? You can leave it to a professionals, but seriously, who's going to look after it better than you? You've okay. got to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're just risking it. For example, I once went along to, I, I'm in Melbourne, went along to a financial advisor in very tall building down Collins Street, which is the, the financial sector. <laughs> and Wall Street. the first thing he said to me was, he said, this house that you've got in the ACT, he said, you've got to sell that. He said, and buy something, da 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 Now, that house in the ACT has bought me five houses since. Exactly. If, if I had taken his advice, because it's not his money, Ralph. <laughs> so <laughs> he doesn't care. It's not him that's got to pay, put the food on the table at the end of the day. Right. If he's paying for it, then he gets to have an opinion. But if I'm paying for it, then I have to make the, make the decision and I have to live by it. You can take your advice, but unless that person is paying your bills, you have to make the decision and you have to take control. Understandable. Because obviously, like, like my question to you here is really, um, you know, predicated on the fact that it, property is in the too hard basket. Not a lot of people know who to talk to or what to say or what questions to ask. Okay. And, um, you know, nobody knows what to do. And that's the reason why it, it, it becomes maybe if somebody purchases a property, they have to just have only the one property and they're not going to grow their portfolio, you know? Um, so, you know, with, with the way the current financial situation, you, we only have, um, maybe 1% of property investors that are actually retiring financially free. And like you said, most of the people are knee deep with debt and they can't really get out of the, you know, the, the, the debt. What sort of um, advice can you give to people that are getting into the um, you know, property market and what should they really, really look out for? Should they go in quickly so that they have the rest of their lives to pay or should they make it happen as they, go along because that's the advice that's our day on the market right now they should get into the property market as soon as they can there's no doubt about that however they've got to get in they may not be able to get into it where they would like to they may not be able to buy around the corner they might have might have to buy out in the country they might have to buy a dilapidated house 
but they should get in as fast as they can with whatever they can because property does grow in value traditionally if you buy well and you've got to buy well which is an, the key really you've got to make your money when you buy but get in as quickly and as often as you can with property it will give you a good amount of return but you've got to buy it well that's pretty much it really understandable well obviously you have dropped us with us a lot of value and um pretty much after this i'm seriously going to ask if i can also borrow your wife craig and um <laughs> It's Steve's <laughs> wife, not mine, but don't, don't tell everyone. <laughs> all right. So at the end of the day, people are coming to the internet to get information and all this information will really, really help them uh, to, you know, maybe make concrete decisions and make decisions that, um, you know, would make sure that they're not going to be falling prey to the people that we just spoke about. And also, um, you know, um, losing a lot of money and you know their emotions and stuff like that how can people get a hold of you so that they can get to learn more about what it is that you do and how you can help them they can head across to my website i-buy-property.com or they can go to my facebook page which is create wealth through property understandable and have a look at that now i would like to leave people with four things if that's okay sure sure I was gonna ask you know if you can let us know one other thing that can be of value um, you know so that we don't end up borrowing your wife well I'll, I'll give you four because I always love to add value and okay. these I promise promise you will save you and make you hundreds of thousands of dollars so grab your pen and get ready to write first one is don't buy off the plan. Second one is cross collateralization. Don't do it. And if you don't know what it is, don't do it. So third one is get yourself educated. Fourth one is know who's making the money where. If you can do all four of those things, you are a long way ahead of everybody else out there in the marketplace. Wow, that is so, absolutely profound because a lot of people are being sold off the plan properties, especially in Richmond, especially in all those other areas that are just sprouting because every second shop is getting elevated, you know? So yeah. yes, people are being sold for from plans that are going to be, um, you know, featured in 2020 or 2019 or whatever it is. And by the time that comes through, probably your money is no longer worth anything and you are already knee deep in debt. Um, and cross collateralization is something that I will have to look at because maybe it is yet another eighth wonder of the world. I do know um, if you use collateral with different properties and you, yeah, something like that. I'm not quite sure. And getting Oh, you are good. <laughs> you are good. That's it. <laughs> Understandable. Right. And um, getting yourself educated. I don't know if you can literally look behind me. I'm swimming <laughs> in... <laughs> <laughs> in education right there but obviously the audience would want to know that um that is you know well and truly uh, catered for and actually knowing where the money is being made um as a disclaimer we are not paying craig to give you this information here so he's not making any money he's actually just letting us borrow his wife um for the show here so <laughs> i cannot thank you enough for first of all the laughs the methods and the value that you've just imparted on us there, Craig, on the show today. And um, I am going to be putting down all the details on how people can get a hold of you uh, so that, you know, they can continue the conversation with you as soon as they uh, finish. Thank you so much, Craig, for today. You're most welcome, Prosper. I hope there's no lawsuits coming out of this. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. You have a great one, okay? You're right, sir. Thank you. All right.
Oh. You are going to get me into so much trouble. <laughs> I love this. It's, it's I'm never going to get another interview. 